Hey, good evening, everybody. It's Rachel from Wraps by Rachel. And I'm just gonna adjust my camera here a little bit. There we go. Um, so I've been talking in a couple of other videos about what I've been calling spine art. It is something that, as far as I know, I am the only person who's doing this. I kind of came about this sort of completely by accident. And um, what I am doing is I am taking magazines and ripping them in um, kind of an intentional way in order to see various colors and patterns and things like that. So this is right here, this is just a example um, of just kind of like a small magazine that I've um, intentionally torn in such a way that you can see various colors. Well, people ask me, well, okay, what are you doing with that? So this right here, um, this is just a little frame. It is like, um, you know, kind of a standard um, eight by 12 canvas. And what I've done is I have, this has one, two, three, that you can see on here, three different of these magazines that I have torn starting at the spine and kind of torn my way out. And then I just glued these pieces on there. And you could just leave this like this. You could use this as a layering background kind of image for doing art journaling, that sort of thing. And the way that I came up with, with this, and I'm just, so um, here are just some other, other examples. This is just from a one magazine, right? This is from uh, Art Journaling Magazine. And um, here's, here's another one. This is also from like an Art Journaling Magazine. This one is uh, from a magazine called All Recipes. And you can see that some magazines have a lot more color and a lot more different kinds of, of patterns. And just depending on how I have sort of ripped this, and also, uh, let's see, this is from a Cosmo magazine. So I have quite a number of these. Um, this is another Cosmo magazine. So just, um, just kind of going through, here's another Cosmo. This is another Cosmo. I've gotten a lot of Cosmo magazines. Thank you, Maria. Uh, Food Network magazine. And I can tell because like here is the actual sort of spine. And so you get this kind of multi-dimensional kind of thing going on. You could kind of, um, if you wanted to, I suppose you could kind of glue in you know various places to kind of keep this down. Um, and what had happened the first time that I did this, it, this happened in a just a super, I'm just organizing these back, in a really super organic way. I had a very large, um, magazine such as like this Bella Grace and you can see how thick this magazine is and so I was literally tearing and tearing and tearing and um, I was just getting this sort of organic kind of um, rippling and patterning and I had used that let me find a little skinny one here I'm just looking at little skinny guys uh, of course I'm not gonna find that here's here we go the skinny one um, do, 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 do. So I had sort of taken this, now pretend that this is from the Bella Grace. Now, obviously I would have a lot more pages going on. Um, I would have a lot more kind of colors. And for that one, I wasn't ripping out intentionally. Um, I literally almost every page of that particular magazine that I was utilizing the first time that this happened, there was something on almost every single page that I wanted to utilize and something along this was kind of naturally happening. And I took this um, onto my canvas. Where is my canvas? Here we go. So let's say this is the canvas and I had um, done some artwork on here and then I literally glued that big fat spine kind of like this so that it was multi, it was on purpose multi-dimensional. And that's another way that you could kind of utilize the paper from the spine of a magazine 
that you've already read, you've already torn up, you've already cut up, and otherwise would just go into the recycling. But then I figured out a way where you could even get more art supply materials out of it. So how cool is that? Um, and if you look on a previous video of mine, I want to say it's called My First Multimedia um, my first multimedia art project, something along those lines, I will put a little link down to it. And you can see where I had done that. And um, then I literally took um, some ink and I kind of like sort of did this and I kind of brushed a little bit of ink along it. There, there's just, uh, there's a lot of different applications that you can do, but my point being is that you can take the spines from your magazines that you are going to use for your art journaling, that you're gonna use for your junk journaling, that you are going, you know, whatever it is that you were collaging, whatever it is that you're doing from it, there's just even more that you can utilize. And I am calling this spine art. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am gonna demonstrate how I physically do this and my thought process um, with such things. I am literally going to put these little guys over here to the side. And this here is a, it's a Cosmo magazine that I have already utilized. And so I am now going to harvest this for using spine art. So, um, you know, these colors here, not, you know, quite as interesting and that is really loose. So I'm just going to kind of put that to the side. Same thing here in this gray and that's okay with that. But I do like this, do like this green. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally just kind of putting my finger down and I'm just kind of slowly doing a little wavy something or other. like that. This is my start. Okay. So now I am going to take this next page and then just kind of look at it sort of carefully on the front and the back. How do I want to do this? So, um, I definitely want like that to kind of stick out a little bit. So, um, you can be very kind of close to the border. You can make it a little bit fatter and thicker. This little part here with the sparkly dress, I really want to kind of capture some of that. So again, I'm tearing this paper in kind of a very slow, intentional way to try and get the colors that I want. And there we go. So this now goes over to my little recycle pile. And I'm just gonna kind of keep going. I'm gonna do this one magazine. Let's just see kind of how how this kind of comes out. All right, so this one here, and sometimes you can kind of cheat it a little bit where I am folding. That's not the world's greatest fold. I'm just kind of folding it like this. And then I am going to kind of tuck, tuck this under. And I really like these these colors that are happening here. Okay, so now if I have something like this, I am going to take some of my glue and I just I just tore the little top off of my pin here for the art glitter glue. That is really not what I wanted to do. You know what? Sometimes things happen here in the crafting world. I am literally just going to put that to the side and I am just gonna go ahead and open up this this glue stick. I do not need to use expensive glue such as art glitter glue, but like it was there and I thought I would just go ahead and utilize it. But let's go ahead and use this Elmer's glue instead. Okay, so this white, I mean, I could use that. There's a little bit of pink that's here. It's like, eh, it's okay. But I really like these jewel tones over here better. So I'm folding this over and this up and get this all kind of prepped and I am just gluing this so that that is going to do what I want it to do and I am going to take this edge and I am going to tuck that under so that now I am going to get these colors 
that I want to utilize. Okay, so again, I'm kind of putting my fingers and kind of start my little ripping. I mean, just like anything else, you can kind of clean up your rip if you don't like how it, you know, if it's too thick of a paper tear. I'm doing it like that, pretending that's came out organically like that, even though I actually did that on purpose. And let's say I don't want these little sharp points or whatever, I can always sort of come back and do a little bit of more custom-y kind of tearing. I have it so that a little bit of these letters are showing. And there we have it. Okay, so again, moving along. What do we have here? I feel like I have a lot of kind of dark jewel tones already. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of do this. And, and this is a little bit slower than how I've been doing it. That's fine. Take your time if you need to. You get better and better at kind of ripping this to kind of make whatever little effect or to be able to kind of capture the colors or patterns or like textures that you want right there. I'm not liking that. So I'm just going to kind of clean that up a little bit better. Okay. And now that's actually kind of interesting. And so another thing that happens is, as you were going through these magazines, sometimes you're like, wait a minute, why, why didn't I harvest that image before? What was my problem? I'm like, I really like that. So I am actually going to take those kind of weirdo lips and go ahead and put that in my harvest pile. Good enough. I'll clean all this up later. I'm just, I'm just having a good time right now. Okay. So let's see. So I really do want this kind of mauve kind of color. And every now and then, if like, I mean, I guess, I guess depending on how thick you want your papers to ultimately wind up being, if there are some pages that are just, there's just simply nothing special about them whatsoever, then you can just clean, rip them out. Um, or you can kind of fold them a few times if you're, you're kind of looking to have more thickness and bulk. Um, it just really depends on whatever it is that you're going for. Now, for me right now, I'm literally, just, I'm just doing it. I'm not just have no, you can't have kind of preconceived notions on, on ultimately how things are, are going to come out. And that's part of what I think is kind of cool about, about doing this. Um, so let's say let's say I can rip it like that because I just don't don't want to mess with too much paper. Sometimes too much choice is no boy no. Okay, I really want to try and capture that peachy kind of color. So I'm thinking about how do I want to do this. I think if I fold that like that. And then tuck that up and under. And now I can capture that peachy color, but I do want to go ahead and um, glue that down so that it's where I would like for that to be. Not move around too much as I'm ripping it. So yeah, as you can see this sort of spine art, like it really gives you this super cool feature that can really be an awesome like base for your glue books, your art journals, whatever, you know, whatever it is you're doing. I mean, just like be creative with it. And if it, you know, if you don't like it, it's only paper. Now I stole that it's only paper sentiment 
from um, Pam over at the, she's got uh, Paper Outpost is the name of, I'm going to put these in my recycling pile, in my actual recycling bag over here. So, let's see. Um, I'm feeling like I have too much dark. This is just my personal editorial kind of choice here. I'm just going to adjust my light a little bit. There we go making some uh, editorial choices here. And I'm just really not liking any of this at all. So I'm just ripping that out. And I like this much better. I'm gonna see if I can kind of, if thinking about how I wanna do it. And so I want that. Come like that. There we go. Like that. All right, so let's go ahead and glue this down. And these are just purely what I'm calling editorial choices that I am making. Mm. Going with just a little bit of this white, a little bit of this sort of pink A going on there. like this much better than anything that's there okay we are ripping we are having fun with the paper and we are just seeing how how is this gonna turn out for us what's that gonna ultimately be like but yeah I'm really liking what is happening so far Ooh, and I like this purple that's coming here underneath. Maybe. Kind of go like, like that. this into position here. So all of this really has, the, all of these techniques have just sort of been evolving for me. Um, I can't imagine in, you know, just a few years what either myself or just like other people, like what other crafters, other artists are going to kind of come up with and how to utilize this. I mean, I think it's kind of exciting just as a concept. 
Um, and, you know, as I was saying before, as far as I know, I made this up. I've never seen anybody else who is doing this. And um, if I did make it up, then um, my gosh, how can I, <laughs> how can I uh, come to more fame and fortune? Emphasis on the fortune, not quite as interested in the fame. Um, yeah, I don't know, but there we have it. Okay, so... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really kind of want to capture these like little people bits, little mini photos. And this sparkles and this red, yellow. It's kind of cool, um, I think to I can kind of pull some here. So sometimes I'm very specifically doing it so I'm like catching like little bits of, of letters and little bits of words on here. That is it's just it's just an artistic choice that you can make. I'm not quite as good with that. Not quite as thrilled with those colors either. But I love this red and blue and black here on the back. So, you know, everything should just be fun. Crafting should just be for fun. Making art should be, should be fun. You should have fun with it. I'm gonna take that back just a little bit. So I'm I'm kind of interested to see, like I would love comments on on this, like as a technique and as just a method and I would love to see what you all wind up doing with this and how you utilize it maybe in any projects that you have going on. And, you know, this I'm just all about sharing. Sharing is caring. Um, and this is, you know, the junk journal, the art journal, the... Um, crafting world, the glue book world, like, I just, I feel like it's just like this really kind of cool community, and we are all just learning new techniques and styles from each other. I mean, if you are the kind of person who just, you know, let's say your style is more of a, a Victorian kind of style, well then I don't know if this would, would work as good for you unless you had a magazine that was mostly creams and peaches and, you know, that sort of thing. And you kind of, um, kind of did it, did it that way. You know, I, I like, I like lots of color. I like things that are kind of more unusual. I like things that are, are more, weird um this is kind of what i have kind of kind of come to I and mean, sometimes i have kind of more of a, a, a modern kind of um kind of new modern maybe like 1950s and 60s and 70s kind of you know new space age um like when i do um, junk journals made from like kind of classic little golden books sort of thing. But um, I, I'm more drawn to bright colors. And so things like um, Cosmo and some of the, like the food type magazines, those work a little bit better for, for um, you know, just my sense of style. But it, it's, you know... If you don't like it, you throw it away. 
<laughs> if you don't like it, just go ahead and throw it away. Who cares, you know? Nobody knows but you, unless you're making a YouTube video and then the whole world sees you doing stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in like your opinions about this. And, and I'm just, I'm just doing it. I'm just going for it. with that. Again. In the purple. I also kind of like when you sort of see like, is that like part of a face kind of sticking out? What is that? Like I said, I, I just, I kind of dig the sort of color explosion more than anything else. some of this blue sticking out because that is very pretty. So like with the perfume adds like I definitely don't want like the perfume there and I also try to kind of balance it a little bit I mean I suppose I could have it where everything's kind of you know drifting to to the right um sort of thing again these are Purely personal editorial choices. Seeing how things kind of wind up. I'm not as big on what I call the sort of pokey pokey edge. And I'm kind of like that with a little eye. I make all kinds of jokes about myself. I definitely have a sense of humor about, about myself and my abilities. Um, part of what I really like about things like this is that um, I love shapes and patterns and colors, 
but like if I had to sit down and, and, and draw something, I mean, it's just gonna look like, like a second grader did it. And maybe even a second grader is gonna do a nicer job than what I, I have done. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do a little bit of kind of gluing for some, some of these areas, just so things kind of lay a little bit flatter, for lack of a better way of sort of saying it. Just to give things a little bit more stability. this perfumey part. So I'm like three quarters of the way through this. 
magazine. Definitely taking a little bit more time than I have before, just because I want you to kind of see see how I'm doing it, what I'm doing, all that kind of good stuff. Um, something I do, I've been doing on my lunch break at work. Um, kind of eat my lunch, and it's like, okay, I've got like 15, 20 minutes left to kind of you know, do whatever it is I want to do. And ripping paper definitely helps me with my stress, whatever stress it is that I have. If I had, you know, a disagreement with a colleague or um, I work in a hospital, so, you know, sometimes maybe I had kind of a difficult patient. That happens sometimes. And I just, you know, it's just kind of a, just kind of something gives me something to do. And a little bit of a, an artistic outlet. And then think about how I want to do the bottom part. It feels like I've got a lot more here than, than I thought I did. So now I'm being sort of selective. And I'm coming through, just sort of looking for colors that to me are pretty. This is when, like, you know, you start getting a little, a little impatient. It's late. Had a long, long week at work. I got one day off, and then I'm gonna be working. You know, I mean, most people work five days in a row, but um, you know, if you're a standard Monday through Friday kind of person um, at your employment, I work at a hospital, so um, it's just you know, even though I love what I do, I love. I, I am a lactation consultant, so I work with new families, and I work with brand new babies and I get to get people off to a good start with breastfeeding. Um, I also work with families if they're not breastfeeding, so that's certainly a valid choice. Um, so for example, if you have a mom who has just zero interest in breastfeeding, I'm like, you know, that's just not my plan. I don't want to do it. Well, that, that birthing mom is still has um, the need for accurate information, for loving and compassionate care, both for herself and her new baby and any um, family members who may be coming and going. Right now, we don't have a lot of um, what I call the comings and goings just due to COVID. But, um, you know, uh, partners, fathers, grandparents, um, you know, whoever is, is kind of there. And uh, so if there's somebody who just, you know, for whatever their reason is, they don't want to breastfeed, well, they still need accurate information, compassionate care for um, how to dry up their milk, how to minimize the, the potential of developing infections, things along those lines. 
Um, and so as, as you can probably imagine, I am working with people who hopefully, usually this is a very happy time of their life, just having had a baby, but um, sometimes, you know, different people have um, different life circumstances and sometimes um, having had a baby is, maybe that's not a happy time in your life or maybe you're having um, relationship problems with your partner and you've been fighting a lot or um, similarly you're having um, disagreements with your in-laws, things like that. It's just, you know, it's just a time of life that really, um, there are a lot of stresses for these new families, whether it's a happy and positive stress or whether that is a negative stress. And so, um, you know, I'm working a, you know, pretty standard eight hour shift, um, and all of that, you know, most people are working, you know, but it is, it, there's a lot of stress, um, and, and just kind of a lot of emotions that play into my work and the people that I'm working with. And sometimes that emotion is maybe I have to tell somebody bad news. Maybe they really wanted to breastfeed, but perhaps they're on a medication that's not compatible with breastfeeding and um, they need to stay on that medication. You know, it's an important medication for them. Maybe, um, you know, maybe they have some, some, you know, health consequences and they're not going to be able to breastfeed, that sort of thing. Um, and so I've got to work with them. And my point to all of that being is that this really, um, I've just found this to be very helpful because um, sometimes my job is very stressful. And so this coming week, I'm gonna be going to see my daughter. She is a junior at, um, down in North Carolina. And she is a theater major, and I'm going to go and see her show. And I didn't want to take too much time off of work because I am a department of one. <laughs> I am a department of one here at my hospital, and I, I hear about it if I take too many days off in a row. Oh my gosh, she was cute, and I, I had to work with these patients myself. <laughs> what do you do when I'm not there as a general statement, you know, in the evenings or whatever. But, um, yeah, so I'm really just kind of winging this here. I want this purple. This page here has has some purple. Um, and I'm just trying to kind of... Yeah, let's bring some of that blue in there. Um, yeah, let's do that. <clears throat> okay. Um, oh, racy there. Cosmo, you are just, um, I swear, um, Cosmo just sometimes they just, they kind of want to be in your face and they want to be racy and controversial. Part of me is like, you know, and I've had this conversation on one of my other videos, um, you know, you can buy Cosmo at the checkout counter at the grocery store and you don't need a ID to buy a Cosmo magazine. And um, so I apologize if something that might have flashed there offends uh, if you have delicate sensibilities, but you know, you could be flipping through this at the checkout counter and this is what you could be running into. And, and there you go. Right. But yeah, I, I do feel like lately Cosmo is just sort of 
you know, they're, they're just, it's like they're trying too hard to be, you know, racy and sexy and, and all of that. And some of it is like, you know, I'm just, you know, can you like lay off that a little bit? I mean, I'm all about being sexual, sexually positive, sex positive person. Hey, you do you. As long as everybody's safe and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, sometimes even, I'm getting old, I guess, because sometimes even Cosmo's kind of offending me. And I'm like, really? Cosmo's offending me? Okay. Yeah. Um, there you go. Okay. Coming towards the end here. And now I'm just really, really being selective, perhaps, with colors. Let's glue this down. like 45 minutes or so. I'm going to wind this up. Definitely, definitely getting the idea. Spine art. Okay, so you see how, like, where I tore right there? Um, you could literally just rip and rip and rip and then just get that, you know, thick thing and kind of have almost like brontosaurus sticking up. That's cool. Like I said, that's, that's what I did with the first time I did it. Um, that's how that... And it came out brontosaurus like. You sometimes you think you're getting colors and then you rip and you're like, oh, that was that was almost like a little optical illusion because it's really not how that turned out when I did it. No, it's not. Well, something on the edge is just super crazy exciting. I think I am pretty much done with this magazine. Yeah, ripping that off. And there we have it. This is what happened with that Cosmo magazine. Um, I'm going to stick my shiny face here in the camera. Hello. How are you? Um, so hopefully you enjoyed this. Ignore like, like, um, what's going on with my hair. It's tied back um, and I'm getting all gray and all that kind of ridiculousness. This is what happens when you get older. I guess it beats the alternative. But um, hopefully you like this video. If you are new to my channel, go ahead. Subscribe. Yay. Uh, join the party. Uh, I answer any and all questions. I love interacting with you and um, have a great evening. Thanks. Bye.